Hello, good evening, and welcome to Sunday Night Breakdown Brackets Monday edition. Uh, Daniel Ratledge and Dave Forrester with you to go through uh, all of the action in the British Basketball League this week. Dave, I was looking at it earlier, and I thought this is like a homage to basketball call here. Yeah. Do you remember oh, yeah. the old basketball call? Yeah, yeah, the one we had to ring up and then... You ring up, yeah. Uh, hours of nonsense at 45 yeah. p a second to get one little bit of news that really wasn't that's, much. That's basic. For the millennials and the Gen Zers out there, you, you've explained it very well now. I know we've got... I know we're big with the Gen Zs, Dave, you and me. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah, so basically, the way it used we'll to work, now. though... We're moving, getting younger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, once we're on Twitch, we'll be, we'll be there, won't we? And TikTok. <laughs> The yeah. um the uh yeah. the basketball call you if you wanted to know what happened in the Carlsberg League tonight you would phone oh eight nine eight something 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 yeah. and charge you forty five p a minute or something but yeah. it would begin with Manchester Surrey and finish with Plymouth Leicester which yes, is what yes, we're going to do <laughs> isn't it it's one of those things where the the worst game was first and the best game was last just to get your money out yeah. Uh, so, so before we do that, Dave, I the, we've actually yeah. it feels like we've missed out on a fair bit since since yeah, our last well, meeting. Yeah. We've we've seen both Bristol and Newcastle bow out of the NBL. The Lions men making the semi final. The women's making the Euro Cup final. First British team to do that. We all miss Newcastle Sheffield, except for you, Dave, which sounded like a good thing, <laughs> judging by your Twitter rants and the defensive schemes on the All Star game. Where do you want to go, Dave? I'll give you a free run. Yeah, runway. where do I want to go? Yeah. Uh, well, should we start with the positives? Uh, I think the, the positives. Firstly, London's accomplishment hmm. um, is, is substantial, both the men and the women. I mean, the women, I'm afraid, it leaves me cold because they're not going to be there. And I've never been a believer in. In, in building something to to leave it, you know, ever since Manchester Giants twenty five years ago, mm. you know, it, it, it doesn't knock the achievement of the players or the coach or anything like that. Um, but ultimately, if it's not sustainable, then I'm kind of, you know, it, it's not going to be there next year. So what we're we building on, and um, the men we're not so sure about. Obviously, um, we we know that uh, we've had, actually, to be fair, I've talked about it previously that. The accounts have come out now. We've got a fair idea how much money's been spent at London. Mm. And um, you have to say this year it's been spent pretty well. If you had that amount of money to spend on a basketball team, mm. um, it's been spent pretty well. They've done a pretty good job. They've put a really solid team together. And they've got a bottle of punches chance against Paris. Um, certainly they won the game in um, in the Czech Republic. Mm. Not the Czech Republic, in Romania, sorry. Romania, yeah. In Romania, you know, really comfortably. Shout out yeah. to Pat and Co for getting over yeah, there. Yeah. My job. take on uh, my take on London against Paris is Paris offensively have been fantastic this year, and nobody's managed to to stop the backcourt, particularly Shorts and obviously EP as well. Um, uh, and uh, but I think London have the offense to keep scoring oh, with them. Done with them. I, yeah. I, I think I think that's the thing. If, well, uh, if you were asking now. me to put money on it, I would have bet on Paris in December, and I would still bet on Paris. In March, but but they've got a got chance. Noir, they've got Noir and Decker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Noir yeah. and Decker changed the picture. I mean, Decker came in in that game in Romania, and he had like eleven points on four shots in four minutes. Mm. You know, and that's the level of you know bench play that you ultimately need at the, the, at the very kind of highest levels in Europe that you're talking about. And and signing Noir gave them something different as well. It gave them a, you know that NBA experience, but also the athleticism of the dribble. And it means that. You, you can't kind of, you know, focus on all of a sudden you've got some secondary playmakers there. It's not just all screen and roll. So that'll be really interesting. And, you know, and, and that, you know, the, the concern I had was that they didn't play this weekend. I just thought it ends up being basically two weeks. Paris played, uh, I think it was Limoges, and had the perfect game. One by 20, nobody played and more than 22 minutes. Played, all that you know, Olish, Olish, Olish didn't play, did he? So mm. you know, these guys have played so many games on and off. And the one thing that was really... Kind of impressive was that they, they they did the two Euro Cup knockout games so far. They've peaked for, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know they've peaked for. So th th that was really impressive because you know it's a knockout game. Anything can go wrong, but that team that had the experience and the and the wherewithal and the togetherness um, to 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 do it, mm. um, which is great. So yeah, I, I'm obviously the whole that's a totally different question to the whole project and whether thirty million could be spent on something more useful. Yeah. Um, but we'll not go there at that point because I think that would be a bit begrudging and a bit unfair. Mm. You know, what they've what the, the, the direction they've gone in 
they've chosen to go in, they've gone, they've done probably to the best of their ability. Um, which is good. Now that goes down to the the coach and the the GM and all of that stuff. You know, they put together a hell of a team. Um Newcastle in Denmark was utterly crackers. Yeah. Um, they played. I was best. doing a Euro Cup game at the time, but I had the I had the play by play stream on, and it was one of those where I thought, oh, they're going to fall short here. Back and turnover. Whoa! Back and turnover. Whoa! What's going on? Uh, apologies, Andreas, but back and pulled the Bristol from last year, you know, the last minute. But Newcastle actually played the third quarter from their dreams. Mm. I mean, they they played. A, a level of defensive intensity and connectiveness. And I think they went thir- on a 38 run in the mm. third quarter. Mm. You know, they played what, you know, a high level British basketball league team should be doing in Europe and to maximize all their advantages. Problem was, they got nothing from their bench. So, mm. so they only had, you know, they didn't have Decker coming off and delivering 11 points in four minutes to keep it going. So they kind of ran out of steam. But for, for like the third quarter they played, I'm sitting there thinking, I've been watching this team all season. Where's it been? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we found is certainly um, in, in with these knockout games, um, it changes the whole intensity and the dynamic of the games, mm-hmm. as opposed to a 36 game league season. There are there is the re- but new, those those Newcastle guys, you know, McGill and Taj Green are 28 and 10, and he's got mm-hmm. steals and blocks, and he's active and he's had the, they're all playing against teams who've got twice the budget, you know, mm. which means that they've got twice the budget to spend next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? On a player <laughs> like me, <laughs> you want a player like me, and that's fine. That's that's the way of the yeah, world, you know. Yeah. That's not... And and that combined with the knockout mm. element of it, and then the bit at the end whereby you know you know back and self destructed and, and 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 Newcastle actually did a remarkably good job in in, in continuing to pressure. Mm. Um, McGill shot a bad shot with 15 seconds to go, but then they managed to get uh, miss a foul shot, and then they made, made a good decision through it to Johnson. Johnson drew a three point foul, knocks down three foul shots with two seconds to go. Mm. I mean, you give that, you know, but they ran out of steam. Um, Bristol in um, Europe, they were just a little bit out. I mean, that team is good. That's how we sure that team is good, mm. insofar as they may not be as skilled, but you know, if there's somebody opening the corner for a three, it's going down. You know, they're in a very efficient kind of Lithuanian basketball team, good size. They all know their roles, um, or very limited um individualistic kind of play. Bristol made some runs. Um, you know, they you know, they went there and they were, you know, they were well down early and you thought that was done. Then the second quarter they came back and pulled what Newcastle did in the third quarter. Yeah, yeah. And really, you know, really kind of went BBL on them. Mm. Um, you know, and made threes and got up and down. And and then what you saw was sure like they were kind of Shooting a bit quickly, they were a bit out of their game. It was a, you, you know, you have to enforce your style on your position. Mm. But then they got in the locker room, and I think Lithuanians kind of reinforced that a little bit. And you know, Bristol's unfortunately lack of shooting, I think, ultimately hurt them mm. um, at that level. And it's tough. Any weakness you have is going to be found out. Mm. You know, and I think it hurt them. But overall, I mean, Newcastle have already said we've already been accepted to enter the ANBL next year. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and I think overall, it's done the on three different levels: London in the Euro Cup, Caledonia in the Europe Cup with in the um, Europe Cup, yeah, yeah, Europe yeah. Cup with their um, you know, a three and three, and they've beaten mm. um, Anvil, and then Newcastle and Bristol in the NBL. You ultimately mm. Newcastle have gone. Six and three in the EMBL, Bristol about the same. Um, and nearly beaten back in that's kind of imposed for the benefit of the lots of people in Europe who we never listen to, never talk about, and never really interested in. But that's really given everybody an idea of where we're at, yeah. And that we're not to be taken lightly, the league is not to be taken lightly. Um, Paul did a very good interview with Drew and Jay on their podcast about um, Paul Blake mm. about. A lot of touched on the European thing about what they'd learned, what they haven't learned, um, and you know how it's going to help take things forward. And what what teams from other countries were saying about how, you know, we think your league's going to overtake us soon and that type of stuff. Um, I think that's pretty good. So you know we know that. So so when scouts and and agents are looking at placing, you know, relatively high level you know prospects, and um, they look at it, oh, well actually you know Newcastle be Newcastle nearly be back in or. Mm. or Bristol and Eddie Juventus in, in in Lithuania, you know? And I think that's really good, just as Caledonia, you know, they beat Anvil in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that really does bode well 
I mean, it's helped by the six Americans because we have a bit of an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think it's more so the other three teams other than London because they're in the context mm -hmm. of 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 everybody else, whereas London yeah. is obviously above that context at the minute. Yeah. So so it so it, it it could be viewed as a misrepresentation. So I think what everybody else is doing is an accurate representation, isn't it? It is. I mean, and, and down the line, um, I think you know there is not. I mean, you know, the, the reality is that you know, big British basketball league teams, you know, they they are still we are still primarily funded off. Of ticket sales, not yeah. primarily, but substantially funded off ticket sales. You know, if you don't have enough home games, that you can't pay the money to pay the players as much as you would like to. And uh, you know, there is an argument that you know that thirty that thirty six league game for ten teams is pretty steep. Mm. You know, it's a lot of games and there's a lot of repetition um, in it. But you need those games in order to to get to your kind of quarter of twenty or twenty one home games a season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, if some of those games can be um certainly if the majority of teams can kind of take four or five those four or five of those games or three or four of those games with European competition, mm. I think that freshens things up for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a reno. And so, you know, hopefully that's to look at it again. Hopefully uh, Cheshire will see what can be done. You know, Sheffield got the new arena now. So, you know, I'm sure opportunities kind of will be there now um, because this is a market that people are interested in getting into, particularly the you know the EMBL, which I think is after a slightly dodgy start with some hometown refereeing in Lithuania, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. it's kind of, you know, it's certainly a, 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 it attracted itself to us simply because of the, the fact that the, the games have gone on through the season. Mm. Yeah, 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 it is a nice format. It is a nice format. It's not... A nice not, format for our league. Yeah, not too many, but just enough at a regular enough period sort of thing. Well, it, it just never really... Also, it allows you to get better during the season. Now, look... Mm. Caledonia had the team they had now when they were playing in Europe Cup. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, you know they don't get. I mean, they might not have beaten Bill Bow or whoever, but they, 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 they've had every chance of finishing in the top two of that group. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. they did. You know because but they're done in. They, they have to get the team right from the beginning. They're done in within six to eight weeks of the season. Yeah. Whereas you know, whereas Newcastle and Bristol still had a chance. You know, Newcastle was basically, you know, a missed Jordan Johnson foul shot on the first leg with two seconds to go from going to the final four. Yeah, if you look yeah. at it like that, I mean, obviously games are different, but you know it, it makes a difference. So I think that it overall has been really positive. Mm, All star game, mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, of course, the women's game is better because the women can't dunk, therefore the women have to play hard because that's the way they show themselves. And the women aren't on television very often, so the women are going to show themselves up in the best light. The men aren't going to show themselves up in the best light. Um, I thought the All Star game was kind of a. I have less problem with the All Star game than I have with the fact that it replaces something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't, I don't have any visceral hatred of it, but I watched the first quarter and didn't bother watching anything else. Mm. Um, I thought it was all too. Uh, Drew made a no, Drew made a really good point on his podcast um, about the Hall of Fame stuff about doing that at a dinner beforehand, but that was rushed and um, borderline disrespectful in relation to the way it was dealt with. If you're going to make a big thing of it, make a big thing of it. Mm. Not, not when not when people are out eating, hard, eating ham, but hamburgers between the games and mm. between the stuff. So I thought that needs to be thought out again. Um, the three-point contest was too short. We've heard four, guys, four people shot and that was it. There was no second round. There was no drama. The dunk contests I'm bought on board with, so everybody's bored with them, but they have to mm. do them. So I get that. And um, overall, reasonable. Again, as I say, there's an idea... Bit of planning, to get interaction, to get clicks, all that stuff, you know, reasonable idea, no harm in trying. Execution, probably about five out of ten, I would say. I think they can do it a lot better. Hopefully, if they are going to do it again, they will do it a lot better. Um, I think there's a lot of things this year which, you know, have been jump tried, and I think where there's been some logic behind the ideas, but I think the execution is in the operations of rather let things down. Um so yeah, yeah, it left me cold, but it's always going to leave me cold. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you know, you're not the target, Mark. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not the target, but I'm not sure who is it. You see, this is the problem. I'm not sure who is the target. Just like when I sit in Newcastle on the Friday night against Sheffield, and there's two hours, ten minutes of a basketball game, mm. and everybody's leaving early, leaving, leaving early, and there's forty five fouls. It's the first time in my uh, first time. It certainly when I, I was on the bench, we never had a corrected error from a referee, whereby they actually went back in the game and had to get correct something. Which everybody else you didn't see on the TV, but I'm I'm, I'm going to talk about it because it's so rare. Mm. Um, Eagles get a rebound. Um, 
you know, Darius Defoe and Bennett Cork are running up the court. Sorry, Sheffield get a rebound. Darius Defoe and Bennett Cork are running up the court as Sheffield throw the ball ahead. Mm. As ever, there's some form of clash of limbs or something like that. They both fall over pointing at each other. Um, Steve Ferris puts his hands up, blows a foul, doesn't quite know what to do, ends up calling offensive foul on Bennett Cook. I didn't even see it, and it's not been on the TV, so I don't know whether it was or wasn't. At all, well and good. Fine, okay, again with the game. Two shots to the Eagles, team fouls. Well, hang on, Sheffield had the ball. Mm. Sheffield had the ball. I mean, there's no question. It wasn't the, the, the ball, they were up there shooting a layup or something like that. So immediately I look, I'm thinking, what's going on here? I look go across to Marco, Marco Bakovic is up on the bench, saying exactly what I've seen. Well, we had the ball. Kate Unsworth is sat there, is stood in front of him. I think it was Kate. If it wasn't Kate, it was Matt Lloyd on the other side. And for about two minutes, they try and figure out what's going on and then let Darius Defoe shoot two foul shots. Mm. Which is just, you know, which just wrong. And he shoots two foul shots, then they inbound the ball, and then Kate stops the game, goes across the table, wipes off the two foul shots, gives Newcastle the ball back. And the reason it was so bizarre, because it was a game which was nobody, I just feel like nobody wanted to be there. Mm. Um, I mean, Newcastle went knackered. They'd travelled 12 yeah, hours back yeah, yeah, Denmark yeah. the day before. Sheffield did exactly what they were meant to do. They turned up and they played. They were professional. They didn't play great, but they, they played well enough to win going away. Mm. No issues with Sheffield. Um, we have to, we cannot be at this point whereby we have refs, I'm saying this time and time again, we have refs travelling three hours on a work day after work to come to referee games. It's just not fair. Because Steve Steve is a good ref. I've been Steve's ref for a long time. And he might have got the, he might have got the call right, he might have got the call wrong in relation to Darius and Bennett Cook. But there's two other refs standing there mm. whilst this is going on with a coach in their ear saying this is wrong and doing nothing about it for the best part of two and a half minutes. And that's mental fatigue. You know, and mental fatigue comes from tiredness and comes from, you know, these are... Three guys who were three, two guys in the last who have travelled up from the, the the northwest on a Friday night to Newcastle, and it just it just seemed to me to be um, you know it seemed to be indicative of a of Newcastle were knackered. I got the impression um, it was it was a chippy game anyway. But as I say, I, I think I tweeted halfway through the second quarter. You know, there's twenty one fouls in this game, and there's still no control over it. Mm. You know, when you get that impression. And it was just it was just a bad advertisement. And then the fact that the game went on forever mm. and it did go on forever, you know. And you know, the timeout was six minutes ago, then the time at five five twenty, then the TV timeout in the fourth quarter. And there is a tipping point, we're getting close. Um, whereby, you know, because and even last week's Eagles game, the Friday night it tipped off at seven forty five instead of seven thirty, I think, for the TV. I'm not sure why, but that means that, you know, again, I'm looking around at twenty past nine, twenty five past nine, and people are leaving. You know, and and there there has to be some re reevaluation of of that, I think. If you really, because you at some point you're gonna to have to cater to the audience that you're getting, not the audience that you want. Mm. That makes sense. You know, yeah, there's a reality sense. about yeah. this, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's and it's not just the league because I've I've got the Eagles. You know, the Eagles. I'm not I'm on the Eagles back as well because, you know, every third offense they're playing some music that no one in the no one in the gym has ever heard of. Some. Mm. I don't know, hip hop, rap, beat you tell me whatever it is during the game, mm. and I'm looking around at the I'm looking around at the the demographic in the crowd, and it's either you know you know it's the nine or ten year old players, or it's the you know the forty or fifty year olds who've been there for for years, neither of whom particularly want to be drowned out by this noise. Mm. Um, and I just think you know we need to there's an, there is an audience there is an audience in the gyms and those that audience in the gyms is going to have to start to be catered for to a certain degree mm. otherwise there's going to be some slippage and the one thing about this podcast has been i think we've benefited from is that we have called things out quite early before the slippage has happened yeah 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 and then you see it happening later you know when teams are on spiral watch and all that type of stuff you see it coming a little bit earlier so that's a, that's a prior one and i hope with the all-star game that there is a genuine and not self-flagellating review of what went on. I know Aaron Raiden's been and he said, oh, we thought it was great, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I understand why he's saying that publicly. Mm. But I hope there's there's a lot more um, intense discussion going on behind it in relation to, well, actually, you know, this could be uh, critical analysis, this could be better this way, this could be better that way. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I hope a lot of things are going to change. And I don't know if that's the case. I don't know how introspective they are. Um, I suspect not as much as I would like them to be. <laughs> um, but there we are. 
you know. Well, we we will find out next year, won't we? Because yeah, there's, there's been yeah. a number of things this year, I think, where we've we've flagged up, and other people have as well. It's not just us that have yeah. flagged up on things that we sort of go, well, why have we done it like that? And it's not really worked like that. Could, yeah. And and uh, and actually, it wouldn't take very much to change. And could yeah. we just? But it, it, what it takes is somebody to either reflect on that or listen to those of us yeah who that's right and it's sometimes there's a, you know, there's a pressure not to be pushed into things and you have to have a vision of the way you want to do it and i get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. it has to be you know that is malleable you have mm. to be able to, to figure it out and at the moment yeah the the, the 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 people in the gym um you know as i say i, I, I can't i was bored i was that was the, the newcastle sheffield game I, i'll be honest my dad never my dad sits next to us he left with eight minutes to go mm. Right. And it's, yeah, the game wasn't up to much, but it wasn't that the game wasn't up to much. It wasn't that you cast, you know, they were trying, they were, they were playing, they were trying. Sheffield were going to win it. But, but it, we've been in some awful, I've sat next to him in some awful games and watched till the end, you know. But that was, it was just, you know, it was half past, it was, after half past nine, it was too much. So if he's going, if he's if he's finding it um, disinteresting, um, then that, that kind of concerns me. Yeah. But I think that's all of them, isn't it? I think you. I think you ticked every box there, Dave. Uh, I said, yeah, "Which yeah, way yeah. do you want to go?" You went yeah. every way. Yeah, there you absolutely. Go. There you yeah, go. Well, yeah. got a rent opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let's uh, let's get to the drama of this week: yeah. Brackets and Manchester against Surrey. Uh, so let's start with Manchester Giants seventy-eight, Surrey Scorchers eighty-six. Uh, Obukwalu out for the season and a ruptured Achilles, uh, so rather unfortunate for him. Probably, yeah. And uh, and for Surrey, um, well, the exciting bit of this game was actually the early bit, wasn't it? You, yeah. you can, we kind of forgot that it was fifteen sixteen with four minutes to go, and Surrey then had a fourteen three run. Mohammed and Cooper with five, and it was it was eighteen thirty. Yeah, the best, most exciting bit was the the yeah, another missed walking over the halfway line, fifteen second call. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm getting a bit picky on them. Um, yeah, um, I'm sorry, we're okay. I'm I'm going in. I'm I'm not impressed with Manchester. I'm sorry, I really have. You know, I, I look at Plymouth and I see Plymouth playing together, kind of with a, a lack of. Uh, with us struggling to compete on talent, to be honest, but you know, playing together and playing hard and everybody playing their role. On Manchester, I don't know what their roles are, mm. um, and I'm not just going to dump it on the coach. I think at some point, I don't know how many games in the road they've lost now, but it must be it must be close to double figures. Mm. At some point, it, you know, it kind of comes back to the to the players as well that there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of pride there about saying you know enough, enough's enough, you know. And whether it's that they don't know how or whether they're just too far gone, I don't know. But, you know, there's some weird stuff happened in this game alone. Bosier played the first half, didn't come out for the second half, didn't play. Harris played four minutes beginning of the third quarter, didn't play apart from that. Um, they're, um, you know, they've got, they've got you know, Baby Alvetra. This isn't a rookie team falling apart. You know, they've got, they've got Anderson. They've got um, William Lee. they got even Roberton, you know, being around. You, you know, their Americans are not awful. You know, Lawton's perfectly playable. Bosi is perfectly playable. Harris has scored. He's shown he can score. Stampley is playing hard. Whatever happens, so the kind of question is: is it is it is it coaching? Possibly because the coach doesn't seem to have much in the way of authority with them. You know, you you see them, and and that primarily has ever borne out by the three point defense, which is you know against sorry even against sorry was pretty pretty shoddy, and also their shot selection, you know, which is based around talent. Um. You, you see, they're the easiest team in the world to scout. You know, I, I know now that Evan Walsh is going to put his head down and you know, just dribble as hard as he can towards a basket. If my team's not smart enough to stop that, then that's, that's on my team. But, you know, every single time in transition, he's, it's head down. And yeah. you get the feeling there is a disease of kind of, oh, well, it's his turn. Now it's my turn. Now I can yeah. shoot that. He shot that shot, therefore I'm allowed to shoot this shot. And he shot that shot, so I can shoot this shot. And I'm not going to run back quite as quick this time. And it doesn't take much. No, you know, at the level of the team, and the thing is, right? Even, I mean, you say it might be coaching, maybe you've tuned it out or whatever, but there still comes a point where you that's your job. You turn up every day, and losing losing is not fun. So at no. some point, you, 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 if you're not, if the coach isn't doing it for you, you have to do it for yourself. So no, that's right. And what I suppose exactly, and what I'm saying is that you know, I don't think they're they're they're, they're necessarily playing. 
any less hard. I think they are doing what they think they should be doing. Um, but I don't think they put any thought into it. Mm. You know, I, I don't see that anybody, you know, I don't see the, the, them putting, pulling themselves together and actually I don't see any particular diligence as a group to say, you know, you know, you can, yeah, you can hit the coach and win. Mm. That easy, you know, you know, well, we're going to we're going to win because we hit that, but we're going to come together. Everyone needs a common enemy. Mm. You know, maybe the opposition, maybe the media, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe your own coach at camp, or it can be your own assistant, or it can be somebody you don't like in the club or something, you know, we're going to show you, 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 whatever. But you don't sense any of that from them. Mm. It's almost like they're still a little bit, they're a little bit too cool mm. for having um, that. And I think part of that comes, part of that comes from minutes and part of that comes from not knowing who's playing and when. Part of it comes from the fact the ball doesn't move. So that there isn't, you know, we 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 love this. Everybody's very keen on commentating and saying, um, oh, you know, they made the extra pass with a great play, you know, move them all. You know, we very rarely get people commentating saying they don't make any extra pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> but it's there, you know, because it naturally when you're commentating, you want to accentuate the positive and all that stuff. And if somebody makes a good defensive play, yeah, that might be because they made a good defensive play. But it's more likely to be because the opposition haven't moved the basketball mm. and put them in a situation where they're in a better position to make the play because they haven't made the extra pass and they're not sharing the ball. And and um, so yeah, I'm re so I'm going kind of you know I'm I'm down on Manchester big time. Um, I expect better of some of those guys. I expect mm. them to come out and 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 play smarter as well as harder. Second um, quarter. Second yeah. quarter. Uh... It was notable for the 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 clanging of the iron on the ring in Manchester oh. is quite distinct, isn't it? Yes. Particularly as it wasn't uh, it wasn't the biggest crowd to drown it out, but that clunking you you repeatedly oh, had oh, 10, oh, 9, ten nine. Ten nine. It yeah. was, and it was. I think I tweeted something about that. I think something about, you know, this is not a fun game. No. You know, uh, and, I believe that is the uh, the only time in the live stats era, as I'm now deeming it, uh, that a team has gone for 30 in the first quarter and single mm -hmm. figures in the second, in the second quarter. quarter. Sorry, yeah. went from 30 to nine. Yeah, um, yeah, that's. I mean, I mean, sorry, I'll, a little bit under. Uh, well, after this game, when Mohammed went down, they were substantially under, you know, undersized, and a little bit. Um, not as deep as they perhaps appear. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. Um, and they, so they do need to make make shots, and they don't they didn't always do that. They didn't play great in this game, even though they did win it. I mean, the reality was Andrew Lawrence won this game. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Andrew Lawrence yeah. hadn't showed up, and then and then may not win it. Um, but yeah, it was it was ugly stuff. The other the other stat I've got from the first half is there's uh, there's only three games in said era where there were 30 fewer points, combined points, in the second quarter than there were in the first. That's a great stat. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's not a great stat, is it? It's, it's, it's a, a terrible <laughs> stat, but it's, it's a, a good spot. Stat, <laughs> but it's a great spot. <laughs> Three other games, and, and just for all you fans, they'll be rolled continuously on a video loop at the end of this show. Yeah. So, uh, Only the I, second quarters, though, not yeah, the third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giants actually got 12 unanswered points around the final break to 52 yeah. 59. And Walsh then cut it to four points with four to play. And you were thinking Manchester is somehow going to win this game, but then Lawrence with five in a row made it safe. I did think to myself that there was just no way Manchester could win this game when that happened. I was thinking to myself, this cannot, this cannot see it. Because yeah, even then, Manchester weren't playing great, but but sorry, were um, were struggling a little bit. Um, but yeah, Lawrence took over, and unfortunately, the um. Um, Manchester probably didn't realise that he was taking over till too late, mm. you know, and didn't send enough to him. And to be fair to him, you know, he 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 put the game away. You know, he's a really shifty guard. Mm. You know, even now, you know, he's probably not as spelt as he used to be. Um, his feet are feet are really it's like put a pat of tiny feet really quick change. One once he's once his shoulders pass, he, you know, he's 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 scoring. And if you don't guard him, he's shooting it and he's scoring. So um. Yeah, yeah, he 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 gets the the credit in this game, I think. Yeah, uh, Anderson nineteen points and five assists. Walsh seventeen points. Lee ten points, eleven rebounds. Lawrence had fourteen. Wang thirty. Mohammed and Cooper twelve each. They were thirteen of twenty nine. 
uh, from three. Sorry, into the playoffs for the first time since 2018 Woo-hoo! after that win. It's a big, it really uh, is astonishing futility given the fewest, given the amount of teams we get in the playoffs, mm, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is. But, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? To be not to be in it for six years. But that said, you know, uh, I'm less impressed with Kenya being in the playoffs than I am the fact that they're, they're like won 12 games. Mm, yeah, yeah. Games. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, Newcastle got in the playoffs, I think, with 10 wins last year. So they they've got they're probably good for fourteen or fifteen wins. Now that that is that is progress. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Whichever way you look at it, that's progress. Um. So yeah, it's so a good good on them. Good on they have the head to head on all three teams below them. So no tie yeah. or multi tie can deny them. Just in case uh, anybody's wondering. Also Sheffield as well. Sheffield went through as uh, qualified as on that game, but they qualify every year. So every year, yeah, less, exactly. less of a story. Uh, let's go to Friday. Leicester Riders 90, Caledonia Gladiators 115. Uh, no Teddy Allen. He was suspended for whatever. Uh, Holmes is... Oh, that's Hampton. kind of a problem, isn't it? For whatever. I don't think that's... Uh, you know, I mean, we know he wasn't suspended for what happened on court. We no. assume he was suspended for what something that happened off court. There are rumours yeah. going around yeah, yeah. what it was. But... You know, I think it's a pretty substantial issue for the, again, one of those things the league can tidy up very quickly. You know, you don't have to give chapter and verse, but just saying improper conduct is just going to lead to conspiracy theories everywhere. Yeah. And and and, 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 you know, and non-conspiracy, and, and just non-conspiracy theories. theories. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. don't know, and you don't know if he's... Ad- which is which. You don't know if he's admitted the charge, you don't know if he's denied it and it's been proved against him. You know, he got 24 points, which is it's pretty a substantial. It's a lot of points. You know, yeah. you know what yeah. I know. Yeah. That's a lot of points. And um, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not suggesting that, that stuff should go out there to kind of, um, you know, diss his character or ruin his career or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But it's in everybody's interest that there's a degree of um, clarity in relation to what's going on. I'm still harping back to Lucas Police and mm-hmm. leaving the bench and leaving the bench in the fight and, and nothing's happened. Mm. Um, and, and nothing was said about it, nothing was done. So, and we didn't even know there was an investigation at the Tony Allen until we found out he was being banned for two and a half games, which incidentally was a decision that they must have took before the All-Star game. Yeah. And, and then I put them publicized afterwards. So the whole thing, if I was a Leicester fan, the whole thing is well, I'm not obviously I'm never gonna be a Leicester fan. <laughs> um, but you know, the whole thing is is particularly unsatisfactory. If yeah. I was a referee, Right, and I'm assuming you have to assume the conduct is something towards the officials, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then I, I'll be frustrated with what came out yeah, because yeah. you know you're getting you're not getting said, oh, you, oh, you can't take it because you just threw him out. Yeah, of the yeah, yeah. Well, slightly dubious second technical. Now he's getting banned, you know. And um, and this, and I'm not. There's no moral high ground here. As someone who wants, you know, chased Dale Hitchison out of Liverpool Echo Arena and Hall of Famer Dale Hitchison. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, Dale and Steve Ellison, Paul Walton. Uh, you know, out of Liverpool Echo Arena and um, and, and listen to Trey Muir throw some particularly choice abuse at them. Um, I'm not taking any, there's no, and I say there's no moral high ground that, you know, mm. players do things and and then and, and coaches do things when they're kind of in the heat of battle or even in the heat of emotion after the heat of battle. Mm. Um, but there's no harm in just being clear about a little bit more than improper. Well, as you say, the, I had uh, somebody on Twitter saying it seems a bit harsh, and and my response was, it could be harsh, could be bang on, no. could be lenient. We don't know. We don't know but exactly. The... You know, and um, and 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 that to me is, you know, that's not the way a good a good process runs. I don't, I don't think it is. I think I think you know. Um, there's a phrase, but I've forgotten it. I've had a long day. Yeah. Um, you know, but truth shines in the light. You know, Indeed, yeah, you know, yeah, we just yeah, need yeah. we need a little bit more of that, and we need and, and if they do, and this is part of the issue with the. I the, get the other thing is I get it's awkward because whenever the decision was made, I'm with you. It would have been before the All Star game. Okay. You've got one of your lead. Uh, you know, that we've talked more about Teddy buckets than seemingly yeah. anybody else all season. Comes in, he's MVP in the All Star game. It's kind of awkward to then. The next day, go. Oh, by the way, he's suspended for two yes, games. Yes, but you've got to look. You've got to look out for all the stakeholders. The stakeholders yeah. are the fans. They're entitled to know. Yeah. Stakeholders yeah. are the ref. They're entitled to be. If it, if something's gone on and something's gone wrong, it sounds looks well. Given the time scales, you're probably guessing that he has admitted doing something wrong. Because it, you know the hearing would probably take a bit longer than it's taken. Um, then you know they're, they're entitled to. They're entitled to be protected yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, and um, you know, I, do, I mean, 
I think it's part of. I mean, this is this is the era we're in, and I get it. We're in the TikTok era, we're in the Twitch era, we're in the hype era. You know, Teddy Allen comes in, the, 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 all those people in the making content for the league are like, oh my god, you know, Teddy, what he's got a good nickname? He's yeah. got he's got thirty five in his first game, he's got two hundred points in his first eight games. He's meeting the hype, all of that stuff, right? And therefore, it's great. But and here's me, you know, saying, but yeah, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure how he fits and all this mm. stuff. And we're, we're we're like bringing things back to reality. Um, but the problem is, actually, the more that happens, you know, the harder it is for Leicester and the harder it is for Rob to manage everything that's going on. Mm. That sounds weird, right? But successes and smoke being blown gets into players. Mm. Always has, always will do. Bab used to call it the player of the month curse. Mm. It wasn't a curse. It's because once a player is one player of the month, they think they got it. Mm. The next game, they're, they're crap. Mm. Right? Because it's a men, it's a mental thing. So the more hype there has been, the harder it becomes. And if you know Rob's interviews, Rob, Rob's very good at praising everybody else. He doesn't not praise Teddy, but he's very good at focusing on the other guys who are sacrificing for Teddy to shoot the basketball mm. a lot more. Mm. You know? So the hype train, I'm you know, I'm kind of a bit salty about the hype train with any yeah, any yeah. Oh, i don't like it yeah yeah but the, you, you've the, not won you yeah. know if, you know i mean uh, you know uh, and it's the age we're in because you know i mean I, i'd probably you know when we had jay sean and jay sean put up the same numbers you know i'd probably be saying yeah jay sean get some get some. but every but, you, but believe me when i when it came up on you know the first of november uh, it came on the um on the bbl website the old baby website you know jay sean pages player of the month the first thing i did was go oh shit. <laughs> You know, and then obviously you send a text to Jay saying, "Oh, well done! You know, fantastic yeah, yeah, job!" Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But your first thing you do is, it, "Teddy's won it twice, bless him." Right? Yeah, yeah. But then he doesn't get. Then things go wrong. He doesn't get a call. He gets slightly, maybe a slightly quick ejection, and he loses his. He loses his crap. Maybe he does. Who knows? Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, we should know. Anyway, did sorry. I, did I mention on. Holmes had a hamstring injury as well? well I can't yeah, remember the season. Ages ago. Well. Uh, Ali Hodges. What they need when Alan's not there. Yeah, yeah. Ali Hodges was still out for uh, Caledonia as well. Bowman's first start of the season, only his fifth for Leicester. TJ Law, his third start of 2024. Duke Shelton uh, into the starting lineup for the first time for Leicester. Uh, but more with six points in uh, a thirteen-two run to make it fourteen uh, twenty-six early on. Caledonia looking good. Yeah, well, I mean, Green did an interesting interview this week. Very basic, or an interesting comment I saw. Where he basically said, "Yeah, right, I, you know, I've got my mind straight, and I know what my role is, and all this stuff. You know, I think I can do this, that, and that." Which indicates to me that kind of the reason he might be in this league is because you know he hasn't quite got around to to getting his mind straight every week. If that makes any sense, mm. to, that's fine. And we'll see where he's at because he's in the at the moment he's a game changer for that team, um, in his ability to get, you know, buckets out the screen and roll and in the half court, and he opens up. And it's the first time we've seen him and Whelan and Paliza and you know and that that group and almost didn't play much in this game, so they had the other shooters on as well. And of course, on top of that, you've got kind of more unleashed as to what he what I thought he was going to be in September. So probably for the first time this season, Caledonia have actually got a team worthy of the money they've paid for it. Mm. Um, which bodes well for them going in and going in the rest of the year. And because basically they're able to score points. You know, if you said to me, you said to me in you know in October that Caledonia score 115 points against anybody, let alone in Leicester, that said you're mad. Mm. You know, they're playing far slower. Grinding games out. They had some guards who couldn't score. It wasn't going to happen. And um, just picking up on that, uh, thirty-four points was their most in a league game in the first uh, in a quarter. In the first mm. quarter, fifty-eight. Their second most this season uh, 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 in a half. Uh, Leicester just about hanging on. Um, the the one I picked up is, is the sixth time this season both teams had fifty at the half. Three of the last four. Have been in Leicester, which just yeah. I mean, well, Leicester's defense is. I mean, Leicester, you know, Leicester aren't that. They 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 are, they are deep, but they're not playing that many. If that makes any sense, you know. I mean, Bowman when he was a tenth man was hardly playing. Mm. Connor's hardly playing. Mo Walker is not playing much. Mm. You know, so you think they're deep, and you think, well, they got Mo Walker and Connor Washington, but these guys aren't actually contributing that much. And so when they lose two, 
um, that kind of brings him down to, you know, and he, and he decides to go with Shelton instead of Walker for more energy. And obviously Russell's just back, but that, that brings him down to kind of six or seven. And Thomas is beginning to show signs of kind of, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll kind of turn it for the playoffs type of thing as a rookie. Just, he just is my, you know, he just and defensively hasn't really been great for a while, as good as he could be. And I just think, you know, defensively they're all over the place. Caledonia. Caledonia, Caledonia are the team to take advantage of that. Yeah, at the moment. 24 of 33 yeah. in the first half, 72%, five of seven from three. Well, I think I said the last time I was aghast a couple of years ago when the Eagles gave up 72% from the field against Leicester. Mm. Remember? Yeah. You know, I think it was 72%. And then that, that happened in this game. Mm. Um, and a lot of it is, I'll say, is green because green gets good shots for everybody. And I'm still actually five or six games in, I still kind of haven't figured out how I would guard him. And normally, I, normally that was my that was my one skill set, you know, after about two games, <laughs> right, this is what we're doing. <laughs> this is how we're going to stop him. Um, and with Green, he's kind of towards that level where I'm not really quite sure because he's shown a floater as well. Mm. And um, it might be you have to start going under and daring him to shoot a few threes. Mm. And that's a bit dangerous because he can make them. Um Leicester played hard and they kept playing and they kept trying and they kept scoring the ball. And if I had, if I say they, they probably had their yeah, they, they do miss Holmes, but you know, not having Alan there, you know, means everybody gets to touch the ball. So they're all going to continue to play hard. But just defensively, they had they had no no answer to Moore and no answer to Green. Philosophy question for you, Dave. Mm. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody is there <laughs> to hear it, does it make yeah. a sound? <laughs> Um, well, you get, you get it gets him thrown out of the game. That's what you mean. <laughs> if Rob gets disqualified from a yeah, game, no but it doesn't there. happen on camera, did it actually happen? It's twice this year we've missed it. I know that is. It, I was gonna, I was gonna rant about that. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, you missed McKenzie getting thrown out last week. Mm-hmm. To be yeah, fair to well, this one, he did do it in the media timeouts. So. No, but does the camera not keep recording? Because here's the thing, right? If you're watching an NBA game, okay, and the, the cameras are recording during the timeouts, mm. and then they'll produce something. But if something happens, you know, like, you know, some player, you know, makes a choke sign up, grabs his crotch on the way out and gets thrown out. Mm. They will come back at the end of the time out and show us what's just happened. Mm. Right. I don't know why that doesn't happen, why that couldn't happen here. I'm assuming the cameras keep recording, at least the main. Um, but I mean, I it's, it's really quite. I don't know, is the answer. I don't know. I, I mean, don't know the answer as to why that wasn't. Yeah. Obviously, I, I mean, yeah. He, I mean, he was frustrated with his team. Yeah. I mean, you could say, and he wasn't even, no, sorry, that's not right. He wasn't even frustrated with his team. He was frustrated with the fact that he knew there was very little he could do to change what was happening. He didn't have the horses to get stops. Mm. You know, you, and you can't, you know, you got you, you got Bowen's hardly played. As I say, Shelton's just starting. Shelton's a energy guy. He's not really a, def- a defensive five. You've got, you know, you got Laurel and McKenzie who you're having to get, go through the, all the time. You're trying to find something out of the other guys. You're playing against this guy, Green, who's coming to the league, who's basically no one's been able to stop yet. You're playing against Muta, who's 6 for 11. Nobody on the Leicester team's more than 6 8. Right? And he's looking at thinking, How, we can't stop these guys. Then there was a kind of a, a semi dodgy call on a spin move on, on, on the baseline. And then you went to the timeout. And um, by the time, the end of the timeout, he's got two technicals. He also, I mean, the one thing I'll say is, I don't think he's helped by the fact that he, you know, that, that particular rant got caught on camera last week. Because um after when well, last week he, he got a technical and he went back and the camera focused on him and we heard mm. some we heard some interesting words. Or we sort of read some interesting words. And the problem is the refs the refs will be watching that, mm. which means that um they're gonna be on gu- not on guard, but you know, they're gonna be thinking, Oh, he's not gonna say that to me. So, you know, even if he says it in his in his frustration or whatever so again it's an exposure thing you know there's a reason all these footballers do this mm. you know yeah, when yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah. to each other yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you know and but then again you don't get the impression if you do you don't get the same you know the impression about it if you do that so you know and, and he had um i think we danced ed and i think it, it was david griffin i think who threw him out given that he was trying to shout at him quite a lot. i assume it was because that, yeah, that was the name Griff, Griff, Griff. And, and, and he said he was talking to will maynard so yeah, that, that was the bit. I, I loved what I will say is I absolutely loved Will and Pablo next to him, the two yeah. wise men. Yeah, yeah. That there staring straight ahead, saying yeah, absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. So it's entirely the right thing to do because you can't. That point is as an assistant. I've been there with Fab. You can't 
you can't get in the face of your own head coach. You just can't mm-hmm. do it because he's your head coach. He's your boss, right? And if he's doing something, he's doing something for a reason, whatever it is. You know, if it's like fire up his team or whatever. And you and the players cannot see any dissent between you. Mm. Right? So you, as, a, as, a, as an assistant, you're going down with your guy, mm. right? But you also, and, and you've got to let him make that decision, right? But you also can't t- talk to the refs either. Because obviously they're already fed up with the head coach talking to them. Mm. So all you can literally do is to, and you can't talk to your players because you, you don't want to look at your players because your players will be thinking, what's going on here? Mm. He's lost it or whatever. And you don't want to have them see you make any type of gesture which may not fit. So you just have to stay straight ahead. And they did it, you know, 10 out of 10. Mm. Absolutely straight ahead. And yeah, it's just unfortunate. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it was a frustration. That was a frustration kind of, you know, but I haven't got, you know, I haven't got a guy who can guard Moore. I haven't got a guy who can, who, who can really guard Green. These guys are these guys are ready to go and, and we're not. Mm-hmm. And Pablo did get a tea in the end himself. Well. Pablo, yeah, he was doing a bit of Spanish dancing, wasn't he? <laughs> he was, yeah. yeah. You know, it was a bit of Michael Flatley, um, yeah. Spaniard in the yeah. um, in Leicester. Not impressive. Sell some tickets for that. He was right, there was a kickball. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was straight me. There was one against Sheffield, which the rest in that Newcastle Sheffield farce, um, whereby McGill, you know, bounced the ball and and um, somebody volleyed it down the court and then um, and then went and picked it up and shot a layup. And it's like, look, these are good level basketball players. If they're trying to break a screen and roll, they're not going to bounce the ball on somebody else's foot. Mm. You know, that, that foot will have moved to a space where the ball is going. Yeah, yeah. Now, that might not be a deliberate kick, but nobody wants to watch basketball whereby every time someone tries to dribble past somebody the foot goes out the ball bounces on it and then you can go down the other end mm. I just you know so yeah he was, he was right about that but he could probably have demonstrated it a little bit more uh, <laughs> elegantly I would suggest yeah uh, I mean, it's not the first time I've seen Pablo get a tee this year that's all I'm saying yeah, uh, good, for, I say it's good for him because I mean I remember getting the foul got kicked out of a game against um, a pre-season game actually <laughs> pre-season game against Solitalia um, by Dodzy and one of the Scottish guys, one of the Scottish refs. And um, I remember I got up and naturally I got one as well. Mm. It's almost like a sympathy thing by that point. Mm. You know, Mackenzie, 16 points, nine assists. Uh, Thomas Law, Shelton all had 15. Leicester shot 50% from the floor. Um, yeah, they can score. I mean, in fact, they can score just as easily without Teddy as they can with Teddy. Mm. Uh, the issue with, for them is the other end, you know. Yeah, they got to stop. Yeah. Uh, more 29 points, 12 of 13 point, mm. uh, shooting for 10 uh, and 10 rebounds. And I've got a stat on that 29 points, 10 rebounds, 92 percent field goal shooting is the first player with a double double at least 29 points at at least 90 percent field goal since uh, Rashad Hassan, of course, the December mm-hmm. 2011. I was trying to think who would be that efficient and. Um, to yeah, my shame, be. Deuce didn't come straight to my head. He should have been yeah. the first one I thought. Of. Yeah. Uh, 31, yeah. 10, and 93% he was. There was a moment in the first half where he stepped out and he, he made a three, mm. which is about the only shot he was, you know, you, that was range all night. And I just looked at the bench and you just saw Rob. Mm. Oh, if he's making that, at least yeah. how, how, you know, how do we guard him? Um, he's really good. Mm. Yeah, he's he is, yeah. Really, you know, he was really, I'd say I was impressed the first time I saw him, but. He's been through a few battles with that team, but now he's got a pick and roll guard who's mm. who's really gonna um look to find him. And, and, and you know, in this in our league, you know, quick guards are you know are, are, are big guards are fine. And you know, and had Dubose obviously who ran the point and he did a perfectly good job, but it's a very different game if you've got a quick guard. Mm. Uh, uh Johnson's 18, 7 of 10 shooting, Green 18, 9 of 12 shooting. Their shooting splits were 70%, 70%, 86%. Not bad. Not bad. Well, Not yeah, bad. Well, actually, from my perspective, it was very bad. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was uh 45 of 64. Um, the only time in the live stats era that anybody was over 70% for a whole game was uh, the MK Lions. They were 47 of 65 in November 2009 for 72%. And I don't know if you saw, I I tweeted that and I put the box score out only because Yorick Williams played 31 minutes and took two shots. Must have had one arm tied behind his back. (laughs) There must have been something. He was 0 for 2, scored no points. And they shot 72% as a team. 
Or so that would 2009. be 2009, 2010, 2008, 2009. Uh, November 2009, so 9, 10. 9, 10. That, right, that was the dream. Was one, three. That, was before, that was actually the season I joined. So that might have been AJ Harrison on that team. Yeah, AJ Harrison was definitely on the team. I think yeah, he top yeah. scored in that game. But... Yeah, he did. Was a very efficient scorer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, 115 is the third highest score that Caledonia have had in the Gareth Murray era. Uh, their fourth highest in all games. Third highest. Sorry, it was the fourth highest against Leicester in all games uh, in Rob's era. Third highest in regulation and the most since. Uh, April 2011. Uh, and my, yeah, uh, I remember that team now. My, my random stat of the night is only the fourth time this century a team has won scoring 115 points, and it was not the most points scored by a winning team on that evening. Yeah, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that right now. Newcastle yeah. Eagles, uh, 125. Surrey Scorchers, 84. Mohammed obviously picked up uh, a little bit of a knock on the night before, so he didn't play. Uh, McGill, three. Johnson, and one. Austin to the rim. Green, Duncan, Defoe, and one. Didn't take Eagles long to uh, to lead 25-15. Back to backs, isn't it? I mean, yeah. ultimately, you know, sorry, Robinson played, but didn't play in this game. Played five minutes, never came back. Certainly had the look of kind of I'm too old for this kind of back, back <laughs> on a Friday night in Newcastle thing. Um, I asked you the question when was the last time Newcastle actually benefited from a back to back at home, and it was like 13 years ago in the league. And I remember that game, we, we blew the league, we should have beaten Mersey that day. Mm. Um, look, so sorry, without Mohammed, they're without the new big American, um, they're basically without Justin Robinson, and they're coming up against Newcastle team that's had a, a week off between games for the, for the first time in. A while, albeit that we have a two week break for, for internationals, and but that doesn't really count, mm. you know, because everybody's got a two week break and mm. you just have a week off and then you play. But if you've got that week whereby you're still in rhythm, but you're also fresh, mm. you know, and, and they came against that Newcastle team, um, more importantly, a Newcastle team who were still, I think, smarting at the fact that they got beat by Surrey at mm. home, and um, Newcastle didn't play it great, but for the first time, this season they actually um really committed to defending the three point line. And the team was I listened back to watch this game back and the team was commentary was really good. Mm. Really on really on it. He was talking about, you know, how the event by the beginning of the third quarter he'd figured out that their strategy was to take the threes away. Mm. You know, and the biggest number in this game, the most important number in this game was sixteen, which was the amount of three point attempts sorry had. Well the stat I've got on that at halftime is they were fifteen of twenty six from two, but two from eight from three. Yeah. Can't beat That's, you with twos, can they? I'll beat you with twos, and 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 to be fair, Newcastle did it probably because they got drowned in a barrage of threes last time they played at that gym against Surrey. Um, Newcastle really committed to doing. Now they gave up twenty six and ten and to cycle on Jameson as a result, mm. but you kind of live with that. I mean, there's probably yeah, yeah. Three, you wouldn't live. With, Mark would be thinking you screw that coverage up or whatever, but you live with that if if they're making two three, but two two is sixteen from three. Um, that was encouraging. The score was a bit of a, a bit of a nonsense because you know Newcastle just went a silly run in the past last two minutes and put about twenty points on. In um, the fourth quarter, Eagles had a sixteen-one run and then finished with the last fourteen unanswered points. They won the quarter forty-one fifteen. Yeah, and they were looking at you know, and bless. I mean, to be fair, Defoe and Del Pesh really kind of gave um, obviously me a bit of a wake-up call mm. <laughs> to, to, to to it because they 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 really attacked him. Um, and um, inside, and then Newcastle's energy kind of just just kind of took over the game. But so you know, sorry, played the night before. They were missing two or three of their key guys, and uh, you know, and you know, Andrew Lawrence is probably going to play twenty minutes at best anyway. You know, but that's where he's at. And, and so you know, again, it's this thing. You know, why do I why does sorry have to play at Manchester on a Thursday, Newcastle on Friday? Maybe they want that, but sorry, Manchester's not that big a trip. They can do that. And they can do that any time. And why? And then the bigger question is why are they playing that game on a Thursday night in front of nobody anyway? Who's that sir? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, we get TV coverage. But well, hang on, we had a game last week in Newcastle Sheffield on a Friday night with two and a half thousand people there. We had no TV coverage. Mm -hmm. But now you're, you're saying we can't have TV coverage for that, but we can play a game on a Thursday night in front of 200 people mm -hmm. in order that, sorry, they'd have to play a double header 
another 150 miles up the motorway the next night. That makes no sense to me. And you know, in, in these in these back to backs, you, you never whinge about a back to back if you've got a day off in between because that's just the way it is. That's the amount of games you've got to play. Mm. Um, never whinge about a back to back if it's something you've asked for because you get two two long trips done in the same in the same time. Fine. I'd be surprised if either of those were true. Mm. Uh, actually. So I feel I have a lot of sympathy, but sorry, I just think in, in this game, I also was quite frustrated with Newcastle. That sounds really, really harsh. Uh, but they're jumping around like they've won the league afterwards, you know, when they're making threes the last second. And, you know, and I'm just like, you know, no, you're just doing what you're meant to do. Mm. You know, you don't need a prize for this. Go and beat Sheffield on Sunday, then jump yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that's what I was so and I know Mark, I know Mark's out because as soon as, you know, Mark's standing there, absolutely imp imp um, implacable. Mm. On the sideline, when all these shots are going in, and he's walking, the, the, the um, you know, and the hooter goes, and he's straight off to what he's straight off to kind of um, you know, shake hands with Lloyd. And I just think it's you know, there's a there's a you know, never get too high, too low. They get too yeah. high. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. they do get too high, um, and that's really kind of it's a little bit harsh. Because if you win, you're that you're entitled to. But you know, no, not that you know, not that high. Not 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 in a game like that. You have to understand which games you're meant to win and which games you're allowed to celebrate winning. Mm. You know what I mean? And there are we all know which they are. Mm. Um, and I don't well, think you've it's gone into the celebration police now. You be on. I have, yeah. Next I, but I have because I think they. Um, I think I think at times they need, and I know that I don't. You know, I don't see Darius jumping around like that as much. Mm. You know, I see him getting them back in the middle and trying to focus them afterwards. Um, oh, you know, on what is to come, but you know, ultimately beating a beating a hobbled sorry by forty yeah. when the second night we're back to back, yeah. but you know that is not something to celebrate. Yeah. Not to the degree that they, not to the degree, um, that they weren't. It's fine again. Yeah, Candy makes a layup and they're happy for Candy. That's fine, you know. It's, yeah. But you know, no, for me, you know, I was watching the last five minutes thinking this is bad. Mm. <laughs> you know, when that's a sixteen over run up. Yeah. Yeah. Bad, you know, we don't need this because the other thing Newcastle have had is the reality is that their bench, their bench players have not played well on the road for a long time, yeah. and um, that's um, unfortunately something you know which is about focus and um, feeling if you feel too good about yourself, that can be a problem. So, McGill 21, Green 19, and 10, Ward Hibbert 17, they had eight players in double figures. I'm surprised, yeah, I watched that. Saw that yeah. Uh, Jameson, 24 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists. Teo had uh, 6 or 7 shooting for 17 points. He was really good at it. Took it in the first half. Yeah. Uh, Wang, 14, 2 of 16, they were from from 3. Uh, and the random start of this uh, game, only the third time in league history where two games have been played in an evening and the mm -hmm. combined total for the winners was 240. Wow. Thank you. 9th of March, uh, 1988, Portsmouth 134 and Bolton had 118. That doesn't 27th count. 27th of October, 1990, Derby had 104, Hemel had 136. And then this one. Wow, that's that's a long time ago. It's a long time. Uh, ago. Yeah, so basically, in reality, the, the first one that matters really because those games were those teams were playing different sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they they didn't sit on the three point line all day. All no, that's right. no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Yeah, yeah. The um, the other thing is, I'm I'm wondering, looking at them, could those have been in the era of the trophy where they played uh, 48 minutes? So it's a big number, yeah. isn't they? It was the um. The so let's uh, go to Saturday. Uh, Cheshire Phoenix ninety six, Bristol Flyers seventy three. Um, Cheshire missing three zero. I think they were one for for their first six, but once they started going in, Knicks had an eighteen four run, and they were they were twenty points up, thirty five fifteen. Yeah, this was. I thought this was another rest kind of game situation. Bristol, I think they started Thomas Edwards. I think I don't think. Um... I don't think they trying to think of the stop anyway. Um, you know, they're coming back from a you know trip to Lithuania as well. And it's a Saturday night game and you know, Cheshire are just flying because they know they, they know they're good. Cheshire know they're good now. Mm, they do and, know they're good, yeah. You yeah. Know, and that, that you know, that's that's a big thing. You know, you have you have a, maybe it's a trophy that's done it for you and, and winning the trophy can kind of send you one or two ways. Mm. It used to be winning the cup, but winning yeah. the trophy you one or two ways it can send you into that home oh, playing for my next job or oh, can be this is kind of fun. And um 
the, the, the thing about Cheshire that gets you noticeably is whether they shoot well or whether they shoot badly, um, their shot selection is very precise. I think there's a lot of Aaron Rye in that. Mm. Not, not, not in Ben, but I think there's a lot of the way Rye controls the game in that, and to a certain degree, Rideau as well. Mm. Um, but everybody kind of has their roles. I mean, the first four players they ran in this game, at least three or four, were like an inverted, instead of the normal pick and pop for Skylar White, they sent Skylar White down, and they did the, the, the pick and pop for um, Chargewa. So four times, three times in a row, Rideau threw the ball to Chargewa. Missed the first one, drove the second one, made, made the third one. You know, that wasn't no fancy plays. Mm. Just to read for Rideau, you know, make a play, throw it to Ethan on the three point nine, and let him make a play. Mm. You know, so, and then if someone comes to help him, he's going to throw it to the corner, and somebody else is going to get it. Macy was going to catch it, and he's going to shoot. Mm. And if there's nothing there, you throw it back to Rideau, and Rideau will go to his next option, or maybe he'll throw it to Rye, and Rye will attack. And you know, their their shot distribution is, you know, it's, I think that's what is. Um, they get good threes, of good ball movement. Good stuff at the rim, and they get threes of offensive rebounds, mm. and that's why it's hard to put a lid on them, because you don't have many kind of clogged toilet offenses where they're going nowhere. Mm. Teams are not focused enough on at this point in time, and they might be in the playoffs on exactly how the game plan. I don't think anybody game plans very well for them because they're a hard team to game plan for, um, because of the level of precision in what they do offensively, mm. um. So yeah, and Bristol, yeah, Bristol. I mean, you know, I think Bristol are having a, Bristol have struggled with both injuries and the NBL this year. I do think I think having seen Newcastle close hand, I, you know, I, I do think there is a difference, and maybe not so much in the level of performance of the teams that are playing AMBL, but in a level of comparison with the teams that they're playing against who are then fresh. If that makes any sense. Mm. So their performance might drop ten percent, but other, you know that's, that's quite substantial. If you're dealing with fresh teams who are talented, because in the past you, teams who play in Europe would make it up for it in talent, like London do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you know the teams are playing in Europe. Are actually, New, Newcastle basically played eight players all season because Neighbour and Spencer have given very little. Mm. Bristol have rarely had more than eight healthy players at any one point in time, so they're carrying the same roster with the um the, the extra trips involved, and I certainly think that coming back off those trips. You know, when you're not in that rhythm, I think that's how it had an impact on them because they don't have the extra elite players. And I didn't watch the second half. Sorry. No, they were marginally better, Bristol, in the second half, but they got no closer than 12. So, uh, Jack 27, Kristen 14, Rideau and Rye 13 points each. Smith 7 of 8 from 16 points. Green 15. Yeah, welcome back to him. He's actually helped them for yeah, yes. in European games as well. I think it gives them a different look. And Bradley struggled a little bit at the five, so you know that he they 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 benefit from him, I think. Yeah, Green fifteen and eleven, Allison, uh, ten. Bristol have won four games by a margin in the thirties, and they've lost the following fixture each time by nineteen, thirteen, seventeen, and now twenty three. Don't get too high or too low. Yeah, yeah. Getting happy. Yeah. Uh, Sunday afternoon at the CMA, Sheffield Sharks 91, Newcastle Eagles 83. Newcastle with 11 points in a row jumped out to a 6 18 lead in this one. Started well, yeah. Sheffield started slow, cook really struggled a little bit early, and we went through him a bit. Um, the um. Newcastle shot the ball quite well early, you know, got into a bit of a rhythm, got to the rim a couple of times, got some stuff in transition. But from about the three minutes, three minutes ago in the first quarter, you know, they couldn't stop Sheffield. Um, Sheffield had a, it was after the media timeout, the bench unit came in and they had a 14 2 finish to the quarter. Yeah, uh, and, and it, was, it was double trouble for Newcastle because one, they couldn't stop them, but two, none of the, role, none of the, the bench players or none of the role players could make a shot. Mm. You know, and, and this is, you know, or make a good decision. So, again, you know, on the road, they've, they've struggled to find um, a bench unit which will work. You know, he's, he had to, he's, the, he played neighbour at the four, and the neighbour at the four is just, he's almost unplayable because he's not been able to guard anybody. Teams are putting him in, in the screen and roll. He committed on sports, like in this, I think, at one point. Um, they have had little from, um, Offensively from, from Ward Hibbert, little um, from Del Pesce, but he was slightly better in this game. But, the, you know, the three away games in a row, you know, following Newcastle a bit close than everybody else, but then I remember them. 
three away games in a row whereby the end of the you know the, the period at the end of the first quarter beginning of the second quarter has killed them mm. part of that is because they haven't got they haven't they haven't really spent the time like the team has had over the past few weeks via de developing a viable unit mm. second unit you never quite know who it's going to be with Newcastle um, partly because of injuries partly because you know games they've played and trying to keep people fresh but at this point in time you wouldn't know who kind of the um the fulcrum point of their second unit was and then so that's letting them down. You can't, you know, if you go on the road at Sheffield and you get yourself into a 12, 14 point game in the in the first quarter, you can't let them get it back in three minutes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because the momentum then in is in the game is in favor of Sheffield. I know teams have runs, but you have to make them work to get it back. Mm. And they didn't make them work. Um I, I thought Sheffield are yeah, they, they are. They are certainly they've developed their, their cohesion in relation to their units in relation to who's playing what minutes, so they look a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, they you know Malcolm and Marcus Delpech played better in this game, which gave them a viable kind of second centre behind Coke. But more so, you know, they ran their stuff in, in, in Newcastle were a step slow. They gave up far too many straight line drives, far too many layups, um, too many kind of multiple dribbles for Green in the post, whereby you could make you can make tough shots if you give them three or four dribbles. And you don't send any help, and um, it was only really beginning the fourth quarter when there was kind of a, a hail mary lineup for Newcastle, which kind of got them half a shot in the game. Um, well, just to get us through that, Eagles got back up six. Sheffield a fifteen four run cap by an Idle Rock three had them forty two thirty six ahead. Early foul trouble in the third quarter for Sheffield probably actually helped them because it brought the bench guys in. A little mm. earlier than they might. And they were they were playing well. Pipkins had five in a twelve-two run. They got up sixty-three forty-seven. Um, well, you say, wouldn't you? That Pipkins and Nichols are starting quality players. Yeah, you know, and, and they're coming off the bench. And Nixon is arguably a starting quality player as well. You know, and, and that bench compared very well to Eagles' bench. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, start of the fourth quarter: three from Spencer, two from Ward Hibbert, a thirteen-two. Uh, tear by the Eagles got it down to 75 72 and then uh, there was a timeout obviously um, green to the rim Eitel Rock twice to the rim and it was straight back out to 83 74 yeah I mean Spencer's a bit weird one didn't play for seven quarters and then mm -hmm. came comes in knocks down the three makes another tough shot looks quite active plays some defense you know look pretty good mm -hmm. um, I thought I understand why Mark stuck with that those guys after they'd come back but I thought at that timeout you know, I think Johnson would have been back in the game for me. Um, I just think that it was built as much on Sheffield's lack of focus as it was on Newcastle's um, defence. And what happened was they ran, you know, two or three plays in a row. They got two or three layups, you know, and they scored points in the paint all night. And against, you know, against Surrey, yeah, you can live with that. Against Sheffield, no, you know, got to make Sheffield make some outside shots as well. You know, they are a team that is, you know, head down to the rim. Quite quite effectively, they run the little curls off the mm. off the corner screens, off the down screens, and um, I, I thought that yeah, I thought I understood why he kind of rode with those guys. But ultimately, the other thing is in the last three minutes, Newcastle's offense became basically I'm just gonna whoever's got the ball is gonna dribble at the rim, and there was no again same thing as I said in the other game, no extra passes, no movement of the defense. It was like who's gonna make a play. You know, and they've got to be better than that at this point of the season now. Like again, if you're being really kind, you say again, you know, what's your sixth game in 14 days? There's a little bit of fatigue there. You know, I know Johnson is Johnson look Johnson plays like a man who's perpetually injured, but you but keeps playing. The, yeah, the the, 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 yeah, the times ankles. in this game where I was like, is he limping or is that just yeah, the way? Because he, he has yeah, kind he, of a short gait, if you like. So he he's he yeah, really quickly. It, but I never it's, couldn't quite work out. No, it's still when he plays like a bowling ball, you know. Yeah, so he does. Yeah. He, you know, it's a matter of contact. You, you imagine he's beating the ball over. Yeah. So I give him a little bit of kind of yeah. relief for that. But ultimately, from kind of the, you know, as you say, the three minutes to go in the first quarter, probably Sheffield must have scored ninety points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something like that, and that's that's you know ninety or eighty five points. Eighty five, yeah. Eighty five, and that's that's just you know that's just, that means you're not getting a stop. Yeah. And you can be on the road if you don't get stops. Mm -hmm. So again, you know. Um, um, I still don't know where Sheffield's ceiling is, and um, because at some point in time, everybody's going to have to play well to beat a really good team in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And they're all going to have to play well at the same time, and the bench is going to have to come and take over from the the, the start. The start is going to have to do it as well. 
Um, I think they're getting closer than they were. They benefited from having some home games, obviously, because they were front loaded away from yeah. home. As well. the, 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 I, I suppose the question when you look at their when you look at their record is: can they get to fourth and therefore get two out of three at home versus yeah. two out of three away? Because their home away you is pretty probably, strong. Yeah, you would probably say that was the team that it mattered most to, mm. um, because Newcastle, Leicester, are more. Um, well, Newcastle have, I think, identical home and away seven, records. Yeah. Well, they're more mercurial. You know, they're more yeah. based around yeah. you know, who's, who's going to turn up and oh, good luck. You know, you've seen what McGill can do on the road at times. Yeah, you know? yeah. So so it's probably less of a, you know, Newcastle and, and to probably less of a degree, Leicester, I think they're going to win. I think they can win anywhere. I don't necessarily mean they can. That can yeah, actually yeah. be problems sometimes that they think they can win anywhere. Mm. Um, whereas Sheffield, I think, haven't got that confidence because they can't because they haven't won everywhere. So their their you know their home court is pretty substantial, but as we say, it's just you know competing for the right to play London best of three, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Idle Rock nineteen, Green eighteen points, eleven rebounds. Pipkins fifteen and five. They were thirty one of sixty one from two. They had fifty five points in fifty four sorry points in the paint. Only four of thirteen from three. Um, McGill. <laughs> So Newcastle have used the same game plan for Sheffield as they did for Surrey. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or the players have executed the same. Suddenly they've took yeah. all of those three away and bang. You know, it doesn't yeah. work that way against Sheffield. No, it doesn't. Um, McGill, 18.7 assists. Austin, 14.6 rebounds. Johnson, 12 points and uh, six assists. They shot 37% from mm. the floor. Yeah, he's not dancing around now, are they? No. Let's get to the fun and games at the pavilions. Uh, <laughs> Plymouth City Patriots 111, Leicester Riders 121 after double. Yeah, I want to dis I want to disqualify double overtime games from my 95 point rule, by the way. Okay, yeah, that yeah. seems that seems fair seems enough. Fair. Uh, unless they've got more than 95 at the end of regulation. Yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, okay. I don't think they did. But uh, no, it, it, at, no, at the end of regulation, I think it was, was it 92 all? 92 all at okay. the end of regulation. Um, let's skim through the early stages because yeah, there's absolutely. so much to get through at the end. Uh, even start, but Leicester couldn't make a three. They couldn't make a free throw. So Plymouth had an 11-2 run, led 35-24, and they kind of spent the rest of the game sort of five to eight points ahead. Maybe a bit more at times. Just yeah, I mean it's yeah. This game was you know a Leicester team which is shown of a little bit of belief gradually over the course of the game developing that kind of belief. They've always been just about the best at sticking to it in any event you know, all the way through the years. Um, but you know again Thomas was having one of his kind of rookie games, and basically um, Mackenzie. Lol and um, Edo decided that they weren't going to lose, mm. and Plymouth spent the whole fourth quarter um, allowing them to decide that they weren't going <laughs> to lose. <laughs> if I can be blunt, um, and it, it, you know, and and Lol in Lol in particular, um, Starting, and this is why you know when you lose a player, just because you lose a guy who can score, it doesn't mean that you've still got talented players. Just they just get more shots, mm. you know. And and TJ Lol, you know, just took over this game, and it was really impressive. So um, the the two things to pick up before we go through the yeah. through the end of the game. Leicester's first made three was in the middle of the third quarter. It was a bank from the top. They'd missed yeah. the first fourteen three point attempts before yeah. uh, Adowu banked one in. Uh, Plymouth were 10 up with five to play and they were still 89-81 ahead with 2.45 to go uh, in the game. Uh, let's go through the end. Uh, and and this is sort of leaning to your point of uh, Plymouth doing things that, uh, that you wouldn't want to do if you were trying to uh, win the game. Not that they weren't trying to win the game, but you know what I mean. Uh, Green took a really early shot with just over two minutes to go. They're up eight with the ball, and he took a really Green early was shot. horrible in this game. I mean, yeah. he's too emotional. Too emotional yeah. to be a shooter. You know, it's just, you know, you know, he, last time he played, he scored, he, he dropped 30 on us during that. Shot. That's great, and everybody's shooting and hiring. But, you know, you need to be more consistent than he was, and I'm afraid his shot selection, when he's not making shots, doesn't get any better. No. No. Like, I'll, I'll, make a hard, I'll make a hard I haven't made my first two so I'm going to shoot a harder one you know it's the wrong way around 
So uh, Leicester came away with the ball. Law went quick. They got fouled. 204 to go. Makes two free throws. It was Atwood's fourth foul. That was a very fussy referee game, man, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very fussy referee. There was a lot of kind of, Ooh, really? Really? Do we have to? Uh, 159 to go. Not a great pass from Dusha. Copeland steps on the line. He's out of bounds. So that's a, yeah. qu a quick shot and then a quick turnover. Oh, okay. Uh, 142 to go. Shelton kicks it to the corner. There's Lowell, 89, 86. He hits the three. Mm -hmm. Uh, 135 to go. Broken record here. Wiley going a little bit quick. Um, although this time Shelton uh, is called for the foul. He uh, kind of a fast break. Don't you live with that? But Wiley yeah. hasn't been in the game for ten minutes, so he missed. Yeah. Just, didn't he? Yeah, he missed. Uh, he missed both free throws. So yeah. you'd live with it, except. He goes over for two and only seven yeah. seconds have come off the clock. Yeah, not, wait, but yeah, but when you're up by three with a minute and a half to go, you're not playing the clock. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. not, yeah, not, but not, not, not at that point. You'd be playing the score. You can't run, not win the game that way. Uh, 126 to go. Thomas called for a moving screen. I thought that one was a little harsh on him. To be yeah, it's, it's what they called the whole game, everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, 108 to go. Atwood attacks. It almost rolled in. Uh, he was fouled, so Shelton fouled out of the game. That was his fifth foul. Uh, could easily for. have been an M1. Ends up being one for two from the free throw line. 90-86. That was good for Leicester because Idova was actually while Shelton was picking up numbers, Idova was the guy who was able to space the court as a five, mm. helping him. Uh, and and he did exactly that. Uh, Twelve seconds later, fifty six point eight seconds to go. A Dewu pick and pop wide open at the top, ninety to eighty nine. Astounded me the amount of open looks he got on that, yeah. and it wasn't just open. It was like it wasn't just kind of open. It was just just on his own. Yeah, like yeah. oh, you Duke Shelton. Oh, so yeah. much. I've, I've recognised the wrong guy. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I know he's only shooting thirty one percent, but he's already made two or three, and it's like yeah. you're. About so you're trying to keep threes out of the game and you're giving them pick and pop threes and catch and shoot threes. 40 seconds to go. Dusha with a nice uh, lane to the rim, lays it in, 92-89. Yeah. Uh, 27.7 seconds to go. McKenzie uh, out on the wing. I think they kind of got... To, uh, are we switching out? Am I coming back? Is it? And they just sort oh, of... Back... On Kimball McKenzie with 27 seconds to go, when you're up three... You know, I mean, I'm, you know, as Copeland and, and the big, and I think Matt Wiley maybe, it's like, look, you're better off trapping him. Both yeah, of yeah, them. both of you go, not neither of you. <laughs> not neither of you. I mean, I was, you know, and they'd already given up Lawler catch catching, shooting a door with a wide open one, and Leicester are feeling good about themselves, and they're in a rhythm. And, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, I'd say, yeah, Kimball's a great shot, but Kimball's going to make that shot. Although, to be fair, Kimball chased after that like somebody who didn't believe it was going in. Kimball's going to make that shot. I'm telling you now. You can see his eye. You know, there are shots. You know, and there's like one in the earlier in the game where he came out with timeout and they were down eight or nine. Mm. And they ran a little a little play from coming to a little um, down screen from, or a flare screen. Flare screen. get the ball to the wing. Yeah. And he got the ball and he nailed a three. And he was never going to miss that shot because he's coming was, he's coming out of that play, having it been called by the coach, knowing that that's his shot. And he doesn't miss those ones. No. Doesn't, so, watch him, he doesn't miss them. 92 all. Uh, Plymouth obviously run it down. Copeland back iron on the miss. Mm. Uh, not too far away. Law got the rebound. He had about four and a half seconds to get down court. He drives. Uh, both defenders collapsed on. He tried to give it off. There wasn't really time for that. He, he probably needed to. It's a bit to late to defend the drive, wasn't it? You know, yeah. three minutes did. They defended yeah. the drive. If they defended the pressure of the ball and defended for the drive at any point in the last three minutes, they'd have won. They also had a bit of a difficulty with the lineups because basically they couldn't get a stop if Levi wasn't in the game. Mm. Levi was in the game. They were they weren't as effective offensively, you know. So PJ is currently trying to have constantly constantly trying to have to balance his lineups up. Um, but defensively without Levi, they were, you know, pretty rank. So into overtime number one, Plymouth scored the first six points of the game yeah, and won the game again, yeah. Look <laughs> like they were gonna do it again. They're uh they were 100 to 94 ahead with 130 to go. Uh, Law gets a wide open three, and it's a three point game, 100 to 97. And then, uh, other end of the floor, Wiley slipped relatively late in the shot clock. The ball then get deflected into the backcourt. So, yeah. Disha has to, Disha has to heave from inside his own half, and yeah. it's over the top. It's a 24 second violation anyway. Um, so then Leicester come down the other way and ran what was basically the same play, McKenzie yeah. to Lowell. They did close out a little better, 
this time around, but he's just made one on the previous play, so it ties the game at all. They're in absolute rhythm. And at this point, you know, their offense is going to Mackenzie Lowell and Adobo. And to be mm. fair, Thomas is playing, but Thomas is deferring to them. Mm. So he's not trying to force anything. And um trying to think who else was on the court. I can't even remember who else was on the court. Uh, um, Russell. Russell. So Russell is Russell made a couple of plays in second overtime, but he's not forcing anything either, really. Mm. So, you know, they've got there's kind of three creators on the court in, in, in Russell McKenzie and, and Law. And um you know, and, and just Plymouth's reaction to who they were guarding was just, you know, just non existent. Mm. And I hate that I'm so negative about mm. Leicester because Leicester just basically made every shot, mm. you know, and, and, and they and they showed a hell of a lot of bottle to 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 turn around what you know and togetherness to turn around what was basically a, a certain defeat. Yeah, they lost the game but, twice. You know, but uh, yeah, but they're just you know Plymouth just made all the mistakes of a losing team, and yeah. they're not they're not mistakes that might be immediately apparent to people, which is why I feel I have to be petty and picking them. <laughs> uh, Dusha ends up with an open corner three. That one went halfway down. Should have given him a point. It was so far in. Yeah. Came back out again. Unlucky. That Leicester's one. defense wasn't great at any point. No, either. no, no, they no. Are, You know, so I mean, but their offense was. You don't get. Do you don't get 121 with uh, yeah. great defense? Um. So Mackenzie running the clock, got to the elbow. Hart did enough there just to knock it loose. Throw yeah, that's where defense Plymouth played. That yeah. Joe Hart actually guarded Mackenzie last play. You know, he hadn't played much of the much of the end of the normal time. Joe Hart, that might have been a mistake. So back iron for the Mackenzie shot and into second period of overtime. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russell a three. Riders hit the first five points. Atwood leveled the game with uh, two minutes to go. Uh, one thirty-eight to go. Um, tough shot, Mackenzie, top of the key, knocked it down. One hundred nine, one eleven, and then one twenty-six to go. Copeland called for an offensive foul. Tough one, this Mackenzie kind of jumping well, into the row. And both you and Row are saying that you know it's a tough call against um, uh, tough call in favour of um, Leicester. Yeah. Um, it must be a pretty tough call. <laughs> um, no, it was crap. It was a, it was a very poor call. Um, yeah. but fifty-minute game, and to be honest. Uh, it was a poor call because he, you know Mackenzie was a step late to get there, yeah. um, and it looked like he hit him, but 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 he actually moved as he was as he was there. He, well, he wasn't there, but you know, and it's a fight. It's a fifth foul, Mackenzie. But at this point, I was certain in my mind that Leicester were winning that game. You know, I mean, people say, "Oh well, if that hadn't happened, maybe you know they get two foul shots, Mackenzie out of the game." I was certain in my mind there was no way Plymouth were going to win that game. They'd won it too often. Mentally, I thought they were shot. I thought they were quite fortunate to be that close in overtime, in the second overtime, and um, you know, the, the, you know, you look at that game, right? Lol, basically, Lol and Dobu basically said, oh, "We're going to make the shots we need to win the game." You didn't see that out of any of the Plymouth players. Mm-hmm. You didn't. You didn't see that man- mindset. You saw the uncertainty in those guys, and you saw the certainty in the last day guys, and that's why I say that. You know, ultimately, yeah, it was a bad call, but you know, these things happen. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not putting that game. That was a game that should not have been being played at that time. Mm. You know, Plymouth should have, that that game should have, that game should have been finished twenty minutes beforehand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Adowu pick and pop again, uh, wide open. One hundred nine, one fourteen, one sixteen to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dusha quickly to the rim, cuts it to three. Uh, Dusha then knocked the ball out of bounds. Uh, I think it was Russell he knocked it away from. So Leicester lost a couple of seconds on the on the shot clock, so, and they're in an awkward spot right in front of the Plymouth bench down in the corner. So they need to get it relatively quickly uh, over the half court, and they threw it to Thomas, who was at the mid court, and he just turned and drove all the way to the rim to dunk it in. They kind of over gambled Plymouth. Well, they played the same type of defense they played the last fifteen minutes of the game. What? Yeah, yeah, just to just yeah. stop the. You know, I mean, they had no, they had, they, uh, you could see, I thought, you, again, it's, it's not maybe palpable, but I think I could see it. And, it, you know, it, the belief just drained out of them. And the defense, as I say, without Levi in the game was horrible. Uh, that was 111, 116. And then Paul James called a timeout. And that was the first timeout by either team since the media timeout in the fourth quarter, which isn't either team either. Just a, Incredibly, there's a round of applause, guys. Thank God, yeah. Thank that. it's six o'clock on a Sunday night. No one wants to be watching forever, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the game flows better for it. Thank you. We don't have media timeouts in overtime, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, green yeah. talking yeah. of uh, 
talking of shot selection, a slightly rushed turnaround shot. Uh, horrible play. I'm sorry, you know, if you're telling me you're down by five, you bought a timeout, and that's the shot you get. A guy who's one of nine shooting a turnaround 18 foot two pointer when you're down five. You know, that's what I mean, mentally gone. They were just at that point, they were they, 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 they were hoping for a miracle at that point. Let's start getting open threes from Adobo and Lyle. They're moving the basketball, they're getting to the rim. Russell's getting to the rim, Lyle's getting to the rim. You know, basically, Clemens is like, throw it to Atwood until Atwood gets tired. And then hope and then hope Dusha makes a play. There's a difference in the quality of shots. And it was only because Leicester missed so many shots early on that Plymouth had the chance to put the game away early. And then um, they failed because they didn't ad adhere to any basic structures of defensive basketball and knowing your opposition. And then uh next play down, Mackenzie skip pass, cross court, finds uh Lowell. He's got an amazing shot action where he catches yeah. the ball there and then shoots it without it coming down. He's got a little hitch. He's got a little yeah, hitch yeah. shot, yeah. Okay, but elbow hitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he made that. I think when he shot that one, I think I turned off in disgust at Plymouth, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the game was done at that point. I was, you know, you know, I've seen, you know, I, I saw I saw some a team with some winners on it yeah. playing against a team with some guys who haven't learned to win, I'm afraid. And that was the dagger. Oh, not, not all of them, I'm not near everybody, but yeah. but you know, you know, that's a game as a professional basketball player. If you're Plymouth, if the opposition is over 14 yeah. and you're scoring all that easily, which they were, you know, and they're getting 92 points at home, that is a game as a professional basketball player you cannot lose. Mm. I'm sorry. Everything's in your favour for two and a half quarters of that game. Everything remains in your favour up until about the 60 second mark. You just mm. cannot lose that game. And then um, credit to Leicester because they didn't, Plymouth did lose it, but Leicester went and took it. Mm. But it was, you know, Mackenzie, Lowell, and, um, and Edo, who showed that, you know, basically stepped up and said, we ain't losing. Which is always yeah. impressive. It's it also yeah. to account when you look at the cat. I knew it, you knew it about McKenzie, but Law's been bounced around. He's been in and out of the team, in and out of the lineup. He's been playing some minutes, some games he doesn't touch the ball because Alan's shooting it 20 times a game. Um, and Edo was, Edo was a bit more kind of mercurial, a bit up and down, you know. Um, uh, but um, both of those guys, um, you know, showed me something, right? Atwood, 11 of 13, 32 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Uh, My Kobe. problem with that is, you know, I hear that. You know, I think he's great. That's he, 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 efficient, talented, awesome scorer. How many minutes did he play? I don't 40. know. I didn't write down, yeah, 40. Well, I'll tell you, 13 shots in 40-odd minutes. Mm. You know, Green shooting 10 shots in 20. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not comfortable with, you know, I'm like, you know, you know Atwood's my guy. Mm. You know, uh, and I appreciate you having, to, you having to work to get his shots and all that stuff, but everybody else seems very keen to shoot the ball when I've got a guy like him, 11 for 13. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. Uh, Copeland, 18, Dusha, 17 points, 8 assists. They were 17 offensive rebounds for 20 points as well. Uh, Lowell, uh, 14 of 23, 6 of 11 from 3, 36 points, 10 rebounds, 50 minutes played. Yeah, that's impressive. Oh, I'll tell you something, his knees will be feeling that. Yes, indeed. Oh, they will. Uh, that's the, by hello, the way. Yeah, that... Hello, game of your career. Goodbye, yeah. your career. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that is the highest score, individual score of the season by anybody not named Ricky McGill. Yeah. Uh, McGill had 36 and he also had a 37. 37 well. yeah. uh, Mackenzie, 26 points, 15 assists. That's the highest assists of uh, any individual game this season. A 10 of 11 from the uh, free throw line. He did miss one early. Uh, Adowu, 23 points, 5 of 8 from three point range. Leicester were 14 of 34. Yes. From three point range, which bear in mind they were 0 of 14, means they 14 were 14 of 20. of 20 in the uh, in the 15 minutes uh, in overtime. Yeah, so that's remarkable. That's three point shooting. That's confidence. That's mentality. And who, who's shooting the guy? Who's shooting them? Mm. Guys who are meant to be shooting them. Mm. Guys who are making them. You know. So yeah, uh, uh, remarkable game, but just 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 mind boggling. Leicester also had 24 offensive rebounds, but only 14 second chance points, largely because they were jamming it off the bottom of the ring to themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, it's uh, I just <laughs> it, a bonkers game. Yeah. Uh, let's quickly run through the well, we'll TJ Buckets now. Can we start hyping him now instead? TJ Buckets, yeah, let's go for that now. He's he's Alan hasn't scored 36 points Six in a game this season. Yeah. A couple of 35s. Yeah. Uh, 
in back to back games, I think. Yeah, I think so. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, London 29 and 3 didn't play this weekend, obviously. Uh, Cheshire 19 and 9. Hard to see anybody catching them, I would have said, from here. Ooh, um, yeah, probably. Yeah, they'll, they'll be, you know, I don't know what the schedule is. It's still got eight games, which is plenty. Um, but you, you can't see them losing too many of them. Mm. Maybe Caledonia. Caledonia, I don't know. Well, the head to head is with that type of stuff, but Caledonia maybe could Caledonia could go undefeated. Uh, Caledonia are 18 and 12 with six games to play. Uh, and then the funny games is in the middle of the table Newcastle 16 and 14, Leicester 16 and 15, and Sheffield 15 and 15. Yeah, absolutely. The, the mediocrity is mind boggling. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we'll and see. They've um, got, I think they've got the Newcastle Sheffield um, series oh, is over, and Leicester yeah. and uh, Leicester have to play both Newcastle and Sheffield once. Yeah, and but Leicester you, lead 2 <laughs> 1 in both of those head to heads. Obviously, yeah, Sheffield and you can have to play Caledonia heads. once as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, um, it doesn't make matter, but. As I say, you know, I'm not, I don't. I don't imagine Newcastle. I think Newcastle were probably the least bothered about playing at home, given the way they've played. To be honest, mm. um, uh, yeah. Just uh, Newcastle, as we mentioned earlier, eight and seven at home, eight and seven and away. Uh, mm. Leicester ten and five at home, six and ten at home. Sheffield seven. eleven and three at home, uh, four and twelve away. Mm. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. That's about right. Uh, sorry. Uh, 13 and 18 currently in seventh. Bristol, the one team who've not yet qualified for the playoffs at 12 and 17. And Manchester, the team who have not yet quite eliminated from the playoffs at 7 and 23. But both of those things will happen relatively soon. And Plymouth... Yeah, uh, and we will be virtually drama-free yeah. for the rest of the season. Uh, and if you're a player, right, let's be honest, if you're a player, you've played 40-odd games. Um, you're playing for yourself. You're playing for your career. You're playing for your your, your summer move or your your summer contract. All of that stuff. But reality, you're looking at the playoffs. Mm. You know, you're not you're not going to be going all out over the next five or six games. If you're a play, if even if you're one of those three middling teams, you know, because they're all going to be thinking we got to be ready for the playoffs. Mm. You know, that means more important than anything else. You got to have help. So your body's got to be ready for the playoffs, mm. given the amount of games that they've all played. And this is kind of the lack of jeopardy. It's kind of the frustration of it. You know, you know we are getting not substandard basketball, but not the highest standard basketball that we could get because there are so many games being played. Um, and it is, and there's so little jeopardy on the games. Mm. And, you know, and it's nice, yeah, okay, the difference between fourth and sixth is, yeah, I get that. And you get the, the, the two home games gives you a little bit of that. Um. But no player's going to go and bust himself, you know, for that when they know that they've got to be ready to produce on those playoff games. Mm. Uh, Plymouth so, 5 and 24 and eliminated. I don't think I'm that's another sure. bubble popped in it. Yeah. Ooh, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playoffs are going to be fantastic. Playoffs are going to be crazy. Nah. One, two, and three will win. Four and five will toss a coin. Might have a decent overtime game. And then London will hammer everybody. Apart from that, don't <laughs> keep watching us. <laughs> Welcome to welcome to basketball call. That's what we always used to say at the end. Yeah, welcome to basketball. Forty-five quid to get here. Here's yeah. your bubble burst. Yeah, <laughs> well, basketball cynics are us. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I had a long day today. I can't. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, so if anybody does want to pay twenty-five p a minute for that, if you just fax your money through to me and Dave, well, absolutely. Well. Yeah, even the photo, <laughs> even a photocopy of the coin and do it. Me. <laughs> Try and find someone who can do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my... You probably represented them earlier today, did you, Dave? No, no, <laughs> no counterfeiting today, sadly. They're, they're, they're more interesting. No. Right. On that note, uh, yeah. it's Easter Sunday next week, Dave. On that power note, even. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. And I think uh, I'm working on the Saturday, uh, but I might wander down to Mattioli Arena and watch uh, Easter Leicester Sunday, versus yeah. Newcastle. Oh, they really? That's the Newcastle yeah. Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, yeah. It's nothing sacred. Oh, no. Um, oh, well, well, I suppose... We'll be... all be in the church beforehand, Dave. Any chance of chuck an Easter egg instead, chuck a duck or something like that? Well, yeah. If I get yeah, on the front yeah, row, I'll be catching yeah. them, mate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Right, yeah, okay, that's to be Newcastle for what seems like the 17th time this season, but it's only like the fifth. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, and Dave yeah. will be back in uh, full of full of the joys of Easter. <laughs> full of disdain. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? You actually have to be a real enthusiastic to be this disdainful. <laughs> You're a real enthusiast, yeah, yeah I think. Because you have to care enough about it to care enough about not liking it. But anyway, <laughs> not all bad. I mean, look, look, I mean, uh, you know, everyone likes watching car crashes, you know, Plymouth v Leicester, you know, can't be a car crash. Let's see, what time is that? Oh, it's the early game, so that's okay. Right. That's okay. Uh, see you back. Cool. Right. So, uh, have a great Easter, everybody. And Dave and I will be back full of chocolate next Sunday night to do it all over again, won't we? Yeah, full of Easter joy. Indeed. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.